Hi there, in this video we're going to go through the inverse hyperbolic functions and I'm going to give you the result but we're going to also prove the result together. Okay, so inverse hyperbolic functions. So I hope you can see that. Let me take a ruler and a pen and underline that. So this is the first result. So result number one. So result number one, let me prove to you that the inverse hyperbolic sine function has the definition ln x plus the square root x squared plus one. Okay, so that result is true for real values uh, of x. So let me underline that and let, let me show you the proof, how the proof is done. So let me go through the steps. So firstly, step number one, I let y equal the inverse hyperbolic sine of x. Okay, so that is step number one. And I rewrite this as hyperbolic sine y is equal to x. So that is step number one. So step number two is I use a definition of the hyperbolic sine function and I find an expression for hyperbolic sine y using that definition. So Remember the definition of hyperbolic sine x, it was e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. So that was, uh, I stated that definition in a previous video. So by using that definition, hyperbolic sine y is e to the y minus e to the minus y. Let me take a ruler divided by 2 and that is equal to x on the right hand side. So the idea now is um, if we rearrange and find y in terms of x, okay? Um, and initially, remember, we said that y equals the inverse hyperbolic sine of x. So if we find y in terms of x, we've, um, we're going to prove the definition of the inverse hyperbolic sine x as a result. So let's find y in terms of x. Let's rearrange. So I'm going to cross multiply here. So if I cross multiply, I'm going to have e to the y minus e to the minus y equals 2x. And I'm going to get rid of this negative power. So to get rid of this negative power here, I'm going to multiply the whole equation throughout by e to the y. Now, if I multiply throughout by e to the y, we're going to end up with e to the 2y minus 1. So e to the y times e to the minus y is e to the 0, which is equates to 1. And that is equal to 2x times e to the y, which is 2x e to the y on our right hand side. Okay. Now, if I move this term, so if I move all of my terms to one side, so if I move my terms to the left hand side, we're going to have e to the 2y minus 2x e to the y minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, and I'm going to make this resemble a quadratic. So remember, there is a result that if you have e to the, uh, well, x to the power a, b, we could write that as x to the power of a raised to the power of b. So if I use this result for e to the 2y, I can write e to the 2y as e to the y to the power of 2. Okay? Minus 2x e to the y, in this case, minus 1 is equal to 0. So all of this is step number two, try and make a quadratic equation. Now, my step number three is, in order to make this resemble a quadratic, so I usually use the letter T 
So I'm going to let t equal e to the y. So you can use any letter you like, but I, I tend to use t. So if I replace the e to the y terms by t, my equation becomes t squared minus 2xt minus 1, and that is equal to 0. Okay, so now we're going to, we have a quadratic to solve. Now, to solve this quadratic, we need to use our quadratic formula. So let's use the formula. So using t equals minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And in this formula, the a term is 1, the coefficient of t squared. The b term, the coefficient of t being minus 2x. And c is minus 1. So if we use these, so if we put these terms into the formula, let's see what we have. So, fresh page, I think. So we're going to have t is equal to, so remember b is minus 2x, so if we replace b by minus 2x, we're going to have a minus into minus 2x plus or minus square root. b squared, b is minus 2x, so minus 2x squared, okay, minus the 4 multiplied by, now a, let's remind ourselves, a is 1, c is minus 1. So a is 1, c is minus 1, divided by, so everything divided by 2 into a, which is 1, okay? So that is what we should have when we substitute into our quadratic formula. So if we expand, t is equal to minus into minus 2x, that is plus 2x, plus or minus square root, minus 2x squared is 4x squared, minus 4 times 1 times minus 1, is plus 4, whole thing divided by 2 into 1, which is 2, okay? And from this point forwards, we can simplify this term, so the, ter the, the term under the root further, so if I extract a common factor of 4, okay? So if I extract a common factor of 4, but further take that 4 common factor out of the square root sign, the square root of 4 will become 2. So what I'm trying to say is, we're going to have t is equal to 2x plus or minus, taking that common factor of 4 out of the square root sign becomes 2. So what is left over is the root of x squared plus 1 whole thing divided by 2 okay and by doing this we can take out a common factor of 2 from the numerator so if I take out a common factor of 2 from the numerator I'll have x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1 whole thing divided by 2 and you can cancel this 2 by the 2 in the denominator, leaving you with t is equal to x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay? Now, that takes us to the next step. So that takes us to the next step, step number 4. Because, let, let's go back a little bit. Remember, t is e to the y. OK, so in this case, I hope you can see that. So since t equals e to the y, so let me replace that t by e to the y, giving me e to the y is x plus or minus square root 
of x squared plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to discount that negative sign. Okay, so and to find y, you can take logs on both sides. Okay, so I usually take lns on both sides. So discounting the minus sign, y will be ln of x plus the root x squared plus 1. Okay, so we found y in terms of x, but if you remember, as we discussed, y is also the inverse hyperbolic sine x. So if I replace the y by the inverse hyperbolic sine x, I've got the definition of the inverse hyperbolic sine function. So in this case, therefore, hyperbolic sine inverse x will be ln x plus square root x squared plus 1. Okay, so that concludes the proof. Okay, so um, that ends this video. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. Okay, and um, in the next video, I'll be proving another inverse hyperbolic function. Thank you.